line up, you f***ing nerds. Who wants a shot at the champ? They bring the heat. Francis Ngannou is the hardest puncher in the history of fighting. They bring the knowledge. If you think this fight is going five rounds, you are out of your mind. They bring you the picks. The dog is getting it done in this one. We deliver every single week. We're bringing the heat, ladies and gentlemen. The money line. Don't miss it on the MMA Experts channel each week. The money line. We are live. It's UFC 300 fight week. I'm AJ, joined as always by my guy Mike Finch. Looking very dapper, my friend. <laughs> Yo, we got invited to go to this show right outside of the Oscars, and this is what I wore there. So I turned it up for you guys. Me and AJ have been dressing up for the pay-per-views for those of you who've been paying attention. Today we stepped it up a notch, didn't we, AJ? Come on, man. This car is going to be fun. I watched your whole breakdown of the other one, brother. This is the most fun I've had prepping for this show. These fights are dope. These fights are dope. Every fight is something to be excited about. And honestly, the jump from 299 to 300, we were in a lull zone. It was World War III over there, right? We were struggling with these fucking fight nights. Then Atlantic City was okay. But they were crushing us with Apex cards after Apex cards. We finally have something to get damn hyped about. And it starts with our first fight of the night and then runs all the way up. To the main event, the biggest gripe of the card for a lot of people is Kayla Harrison versus Holly Holm, which is a great women's fight. If you're looking at oh, what yeah. the rest of these girls have, people are tripping, dude. Yeah, all all the Kayla Harrison hate. I mean, come on, guys, calm down. It's a fun fight. I mean, that's a better matchup than you know this fight that Bo Nickel got. I mean, the matchups top to bottom in this card are great, and it's going to start on the first prelim. It's going to start in the first prelim. We're going to jump to it quick. We're not recapping last week's card. You guys know the result. If you need a recap for last week, dig a few videos back on the channel. I recap the whole thing. But first, I want to give you guys a sneak preview. We do have a sponsor for our Lock of the Night section that's joining the Moneyline team. And we're also going to have a, a bit of a celebratory moment at the end with a little unboxing on the side of the Finch Man. So stick around at the end. After the breakdown and then we get to the lock of the night, we'll discuss more in depth. But we do want to jump into things. It's UFC 300. We don't want to wait around. We want to, don't want to look at Vegas 91 last week or whatever, Vegas 90. We want to jump right into the big gun. So, guys, if you're watching, you haven't smashed the likes. If you're new, subscribe. If you've been rocking with us for a while, you know this is major shit now. This card is huge. Look at this first fight of the night. Davison Figueredo versus Cody Garbrandt. Show me a card in MMA history that ever had an early prelim opener to this level right here. Exactly. Holy shit. Exactly. Mike Finch, I'm going with Davison Figueredo. I really believe you can find the kill shot on Cody Garbrandt. I've seen a lot of people's mentality is Cody's got the power, Figgy coming up. There's a resurgence in Cody Garbrandt, and he seems to be back. I think that this is a fabricated narrative. Cody Garbrandt has fought two of the worst bantamweights on the UFC roster back-to-back. -back. He won mm. a decision against Trevin Jones, and then he knocked out Kelleher. But you know something that Kelleher was really successful with in that fight? Those calf kicks, my man. And I think Davis and Figueredo ripping legs is a big factor. And Cody Garbrandt, especially now, I don't like the way he'll square up to blitz. I really think he's so available for counters. And when you see a guy go down several times in the past, I think a clean shot from Figgy. Puts the lights off. Give me Figueredo knockout. I mean, I've had the pleasure of seeing both of these guys train. I got to see Cody Garbrandt going with some beasts, patchy mix, etc. at the UFC Performance Institute. That was cool to watch him grapple. And then I also got to see Davis and Figueredo prepping for that second Brandon Moreno fight when he opened up with those calf kicks. And I leaked it to AJ. And I kind of gave it to you guys on this show, too, that those calf kicks were coming. Of course, he ends up taking the title back with him. So, yes, I do think those calf kicks will be a factor especially since we just saw Cody Garbrandt struggle with them and Cody Garbrandt has a shot with his hands I saw MMA Guru pick him but MMA Guru was on here the other week telling us that Blanchfield was going to take it too so we're going to stick to our guns we're going Davis and Figueredo I think it's a range problem brother I believe that Davis and Figueredo will be able to fight in what I call the green zone where you can't really land punches it's more so a kicking range he'll come in explosive and keep Cody Garbrandt at the end of his shots Cody's not knocking people out with jabs and crosses they're looping shots where 
He's rotating his hips. I think he's going to miss those against Davison Figueredo in that big cage. Give me Figgy. I know a lot of people are picking knockout. I understand the pick. It's not a crazy one. I feel like we're going all three. Honestly, I respect the all three call. And as you said it, I wrote down Figgy on the money line. There mm. we go. That's a note from the card. And people will say, bro, but the money line sucks. I'm not saying that you're attacking it straight down the center with a straight money line. But maybe you're parlaying it up. I think Figueredo has got a great chance to win. And looking at the odds, Davison Figueredo minus 305. It's a large line, right? Cody Garb ran at one point as a world champion. But the level of competition comparable in the past couple, not at all. And even when you dig at Cody Garbrandt's loss to Rob Font, comparison of matchups, Davis and Figueredo had a lot of success in that fight, whereas Cody Garbrandt got his face jabbed off for a lot of that matchup. I think Davison is on the win. Did I say Davison? I meant Cody Garbrandt got his face jabbed off, man. If I, if I fumbled that, my fault. I mean, you know, and we've seen him get wobbled. We've seen him get KO'd. So I know that some people are thinking that that's going to happen again. And then some people like the hands. You know, if Cody wins this fight, AJ, he has to close that gap. I think it'll be easier said than done. Davison Figueredo's got that wide stance. I do think he uses a little bit of that karate. He was training with Henry Cejudo and that team over there, Felipe Bunez, shout out to him. And those guys like to use that karate stance in and out. It's a good way to beat Cody Garbrandt. I know a lot of you guys are on Garbrandt power to you. He's not a bad guy. I, I might even be rooting for him, but my man, I think, I think he's going to lose every single round of this fight. And uh, let's bring up our first donation of the night, getting it rolling team floppy ears. Although I keep these ears nice and stiff. They ain't floppy. AJ, what fighter do you want to win most? What fighter do I want to win most? Well, I don't want to give it all away right now. Your I your take, heart though it's not your pick. He's asking like who are you rooting for? Davison Figueredo, I'd like to see win. Charles Oliveira, I'd like to see win. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I'll Charles jump at Oliveira. that one. I'll say Charles. Yeah, I'd like to see Charles win a lot, and we'll talk Thank about you, the Mike. breakdown later. But I like Charles. That's who I want. We're both on Figgy for the first not fight, and it's going to be a hell of a way to kick off the card next. Next, we'll jump right to it real quick, though. Knockout prop, Figueredo, you do get plus 140 if he's able to chin Cody No Love. But if you're with Finch and you're thinking decision, you got plus 275. So you get a little more juice. Ultimately, money line, highest level of confidence. We got another dono up in here, Mike Finch. Let's get it. These savages. Pierre dropping the heat. Let me bring it up. It's Pierre for you, C. Fontaine. What's good? My prelim parlays, Figgy over a round and a half, Marina. Turner, Diego Lopez, plus 100. Listen, my brother, without giving anything away for the people that don't know for us, I'll give you a head nod. Yeah, he's giving you a nod, man. Look, mm. uh, I, I I like a lot of these, and 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 Pierre, stay tuned for it because we got to do all these different breakdowns. But I like where your head's at. I would just say that that parlay is a little long, especially since a lot of these fights are pretty close money lines. Me personally, I'd consider splitting those up. Just a thought. I like it, though. Go for it. If you're going to go for a big fat parlay like that, just keep the dollar amount low, right? 10% of what you're betting that night. I wouldn't throw the house at it when you're going for these fat ass parlays. You're talking to a guy who's been deemed. I don't know. Some people call me the parlay king, and uh, I don't go past three. So that's a fat parlay, brother. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. And you know what time it is? A second fight of the night time. It's Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. Finch, is that signed now? I'm curious. Is it signed? It's signed by me. Whoever wants it, hit Holy me up. Let's go. Drop, drop that Michael Bowman $50 don't off. Freaking mail it to your house right now. I'll sign it up. Uh, I work at UFC gym. They mail us a bunch. So I might as well for every pay-per-view. We're starting it off now. There it is, folks. 300 poster. It's just got a 300 on it. No faces. Yeah, honestly, I wish they had a face on it. But, you know, what? maybe it's better without it. They got to get all those signatures, man. They're doing the yeah. press conference with all the fighters. They might as well have them sign, right? All the fighters yeah. sign it. Um, yeah. I don't know. Do people like sign stuff anymore? I feel like the good thing is to bust out the iPhone, get the picture, right? I like, know. what would you rather? Would you rather have a picture with Alex Pahea or have him sign something? Picture. You know what I'm saying? I got a picture with Dada 5000 recently. That was pretty <laughs> cool. I was hype on that, man. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean... I'm I'm not the biggest Dada five thousand fan, but uh, he's you cool. know I'm he's cool. Good shit. Let's go. Listen, let's talk this fight. We got Bobby Green, Jim Miller. You know Finch. 
If you eliminate the Jalen Turner knockout loss, Bobby Green is a six to one favorite heading in. Like he's going to be a massive favorite after a Grant Dawson W. And then he gets destroyed against Jalen Turner and took some significant shots after the fact. He fights Jim Miller, who's at the twilight of his career, but still having a hard run late. But I look at opposition. Gabriel Benitez was Jim Miller's last fight, and it was a win. And then it's Jalen Turner for Bobby Green. Like, yeah, Bobby Green loses to Jalen Turner, but Jalen's one of the scariest lightweights on planet Earth. Jim Miller is a serious step down for him. Bobby Green has a speed advantage here. I think he's going to be able to offend against some of the big shots Jim Miller throws, and especially the Jim Miller pressure. I think Bobby's seen that style before and fared well. And when you talk about grappling, I don't think Jim Miller has an easy time getting Bobby Green on his back. I feel as though Bobby Green's en route to getting a decision here. I know that he was able to get a sick knockout of Grant Dawson. So there's a bit of pop with Bobby Green, but Jim Miller eats a good punch and he's got a lot of dog in him, especially, I mean, shit, UFC 100 and 200 winner. Unfortunately, third time is not a charm. I think he's going to be deemed to lose and take an L against Bobby Green. I'm going with Green for the dubski. I know that a lot of people are high on Jim Miller. And I know that everybody saw the worst stoppage of the year when Jalen Turner just kept beating on the unconscious body of Bobby Green. And we have to consider that, and that has to be weighed on the scale as well. But Bobby Green was boxing the face off of Drew Dober before that crazy KO. Bobby Green's hands are nasty. And if you look at the similarities between Drew Dober and Jim Miller, short, stocky guys, they got they could throw some big shots. They they, they Jim Miller's jujitsu is better, but can he get it to the ground? I don't think so, man. Unless he can get Bobby Green to the ground, I think he's getting his face smacked up all night. Bobby Green, KO or decision, you can money line it straight down the middle. Uh, it might be a parlay piece too. Bobby Green, the thing we're concerned about is how is his health? How is his health after that Jalen Turner fight? If he's all good, AJ, I think he smokes Jim Miller. All respect to the legend. Like AJ said on his other show, we ain't superstitious around here, okay? I know Jim Miller won at UFC 100 and 200, but come on, man. The buck stops here. Bobby Green probably puts him away. Mike Finch, when is your YouTube th takeover, bro? Wadi, thank you for the two. Right after this. Right after this show, I'll keep this. Look, I got the poster. I'll do my picks tonight. I'll drop it tonight. How about that? Because I got everything set up. Why not? I had an interview scheduled uh, with a UFC fighter by the name of Gabe Green. My man had to reschedule on me. We'll get it done, folks. Uh, YouTube takeover coming soon. You guys could check my channel for my thoughts on the fights right after this. Let's go. Let's go. Listen, we're going to keep running. But first things first, odds. Almost forgetting about them here. You playing Bobby at minus 183. Jim Miller's plus 158. Yeah. Bobby Green money line makes a lot of sense to me here. Um, Jim Miller is not going to be able to box with Bobby and is going to have a lot of trouble taking him down. One of the advantages of having your hands down is it's hard to get to your hips. Your hands are in the way. Chuck Liddell used that first takedown defense back in the day. Bobby Green uses that first takedown defense in 2024. I believe that style is going to work out for him. He's going to make it a boxing match and Jim Miller will lose that boxing match. Jim Miller losing the boxing match makes a lot of sense to me, my brother. I'm with you on Bobby Green. We're both picking him. And uh, listen, let's keep running up the card. Next fight on UFC 300, we got Jessica Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez. Listen, guys, I'm picking Marina Rodriguez. I think Jessica Andrade has passed her best days. We've seen bad performances. She throws caution to the wind, and she can land big shots, and she knocked out Mackenzie Dern. But she's taking on a Muay Thai practitioner in Rodriguez, who I think has more fight in her at this point. I just think Andrade is fighting out the contract. There's performances where I just feel like she looks undisciplined, mentally unfit. And Marina Rodriguez is not an opponent that you want to fuck around with. She has pretty much every striking skill set to have at least up to like a B plus for women's MMA. I mean, she's a quality striker where you see Rodriguez get into trouble. Okay. You deal with somebody with good takedowns. Now, I know Amanda Lemos, you know, big win but or a big loss for Rodriguez Fair and Andrade was able to beat Lemos but Styles make the fights different type of matchup and Andrade doesn't have the cleanest striking she bullies her opponents I think Rodriguez is going to be on point with the stand up I think at this point Andrade is taking an L I'm going Rodriguez decision Mike Finch Battle of Brazil 
Rodriguez decision makes a lot of sense to me. Look, she's a very good striker and it's not going to be a situation where she needs a takedown. I think it's going to be Jessica Andrade who's going to be trying to get these takedowns and Jessica Andrade. But let's be honest, both of them have struggled against the top of the division. I like Marina Rodriguez here as well because I do think she steals rounds. She's longer. She's got probably a little more tread on the tires. She's got more of a future in the UFC. It does not seem to me after losing to, you know, Yan Shaunan and Aaron Blanche field and it does not seem to me that Jessica Andrade is going to get that title shot again as to where you can imagine a Marina Rodriguez even at 36 years old uh, turning this around and getting back up there you know what did she lose to Verna Jandaroba and she had one other hiccup um, I think she's going to look good in this fight you know both of them I believe coming off of wins and uh, it'll be a good one but uh, yeah one over Mackenzie Dern but right before that Jessica Andrade lost to Tatiana Suarez no shame in that Jan Shannon Aaron Blanchfield this is what I mean it's the top of the division and then um, Michelle Watterson Gomez, nice dub from Marina Rodriguez. Before that, it was Verna Jandaroba and Amanda Lamoche. Verna Jandaroba is very underrated, and Amanda Lamoche looked great in that title fight. So this is the top of the division. It's going to see who's going to go up. you got to think it's Marina Rodriguez, and I think she can kick better. I do believe her striking is more well-rounded. It's going to be about not just getting in that boxing match with Jessica Andrade. Jessica Andrade will have the same problem that Cody Garbrandt's going to have against um, Davis and Figueredo, which is he's going to be hitting air a lot. And I do believe in Marina Rodriguez striking. She's had some trouble getting held on the fence and whatnot. You know, Jessica Andrade is more physically strong. I think that's all we're really looking at is can Jessica Andrade grind on her on the fence and will she do enough damage there? I'm going to say no. Give me Rodriguez via decision. And Ollie Point VTV, it's the mother fudging money line. My guy, Mike Mother the Finch, fuck. man. Thank you. And Andre 30,000. 30, yeah, that's me. That's Andre, 30,000 30, subscribers deep now, Mike. Finch. Also Come known on. as the Iron Knee. For the, the Iron Knee. You no, know, my guy AJ's got some street cred with the flying knees, a.k.a. the bodybuilding savage. Let's fudge and go. Hey, man, we just appreciate the hype. Ali Point VTV. Ali Point VTV here every week, and we appreciate you. BW. I got I got Marina Rodriguez, too, man. Look at us picking the same fight. We're on the same page, AJ. I'm glad we're on the same page, man. And I'm glad these donos bring in the heat. Team floppy ears. Is Rodriguez a dog? Yeah, I'm going to read the lines off just for you, my brother. We got plus 117 for Marina Rodriguez. Andraja minus 137. It's not the largest dog mouth ever, but it is a live underdog. It is plus money. And you know what, Mike Finch? I have an inkling Jessica Andraja is fighting out the contract, making her final paycheck, and I think she's going to call it quits on the sport she's still tough she's still game but i don't think she loves it anymore it's not the same pit bull in her eyes like when she made her run up the ranks like even after she lost to shevchenko she still had it she's not that jessica andrage anymore to me yeah i mean i got to that that day at the performance institute i got to watch her roll against tatiana suarez man the division's going to pass her by. And um, I think Marina Rodriguez has got a little more fire left in there. You know, uh, Jessica Andrade looked decent against Mackenzie Dern, but it's just matchup wise, right? I think this is a fight where she's going to get outstruck. So I'm on the same page with you, AJ. John Smith with the New Zealand 10, which we appreciate. Yeah, but if Bruce Buffer announces Jim as Jim fucking Miller, he will win the fight, Mr. Finch. The mind and the will is a powerful thing. Yes, that's true. But if he's more fired up and he's throwing bigger shots at Bobby Green. I think he's getting knocked out. How about that, John? Put that in your pipe and smoke it, John. I think that a hype Jim Miller runs into some shots. I think Bobby Green's twice as fast, and that'll be a problem. I need an intelligent Jim Miller who uses his experience, is able to catch a kick and get a takedown or something. I uh, I don't want a Jim Miller in there slanging and banging, but I do appreciate you slanging and banging that $10. Thank you. Let's go. Yeah, listen, John Smith, I think uh, Jim fucking Miller being announced as such would be one of the most monumental badass moments ever. So they better call it the baddest motherfucker belt then for the Max Holloway fight. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, Bruce Buffer said he don't like cursing. He don't like cursing, bro. I would say they're going to say Jim freaking Miller or Jim effing Miller. He should go for it. Come on, hey, Bruce. Bruce. It's 300. Go for it, Bruce. We want to hear it. Come on, it's a pay-per-view. We're not on ESPN for the... Well, we are for that fight, though, the Jim Miller fight. Are, it is a pre... Uh, it's on Fight Pass, though. It, it's also on Fight Pass, so I don't know. Maybe there's leeway. I don't know. I wasn't thinking that. I see a lot of people on Jim Miller in the chat. Good luck, folks. I think Good them luck. hands are going to be hard to get by. 
All right. Marina so we, we're, we're on the same page all the way through. We're both on Marina Rodriguez. Next yeah, up. bro. I like Marina Rodriguez. I like it straight down the center. I don't think you got to go crazy. And I will rather personally play it on, you know what I'm saying, the money line side. We're money line savages up in here. That's name it. Name of the show, name That's of the name game. Of I love money line. I love it. I think it's the best bet you can play. Money line is always the number one bet. Let's go. Let's go. I agree, bro. I agree. Listen, and uh, I, I got to bring up my, my girl gave a shout to me. She says, that's a nice shirt. You look very handsome. In it. She gave it to me. She said, listen, shout it out on the show. Gifted. <laughs> so shout out to her. Big W for the shirt. I appreciate that. It's a great shirt, AJ. Thank it's a great man. shirt. Somebody was shitting on it earlier. Huh? Oh, I, I saw there. They thought they thought you couldn't breathe up in here, bro. Now. Now AJ's neck is free. You know? my, my neck yeah. is fully free, my man. Yeah, man. We're playing paintball, the, actually. I got the no collar yeah. thing going, you know, so yeah. wear it open. I don't do jewelry. Maybe maybe a little AJ chain. I feel like AJ yeah. needs a gold chain. Right? I got a silver on the ear, my man. Oh, is that right? Oh, respect, bro. Yeah, respect. OK, all right. I'm messing up. I didn't see it. Yeah, the gold, the gold. I don't know. Maybe even the big one, like the Bobby Green one with the fist on it. I like that little Kimbo slice fist. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Listen. Let's keep running. Next fight on the card, we got Jalen Turner versus Hanato Money Moicano. I think Jalen Turner's cooking Money Moicano, my brother. I think he's gonna have a hard time taking Jalen down. I'm looking at Moicano's takedowns on Drew Dober. I mean, good timing for sure, but he's still getting ripped up with big shots. Turner's so fucking long. You're telling me Money Moicano's landing jujitsu style trips on Jalen Turner from the clinch? He ain't even going to be able to find the clinch. He's going to be getting punched in the face. I don't think he stands up to the shots for five or, excuse me, for three rounds either. Maybe not for five minutes, though. So I'm going Jalen Turner via knockout. That's what I'm feeling, bro. Damn, man. This is one of the tougher calls for me. Um, you know, I liked Money Moicano's guts and heart through that Drew Dober fight. That was pretty dope. Uh, Jalen Turner looked real good against Bobby Green. The way he flatlined him was nuts. I think Jalen Turner is a lot more dangerous. So if you're going Moicano, you might as well go sub, right? I think the only way Moicano gets this thing done is with that rear naked strangle. That's his shit. Like if he can get on top of the tarantula's back and is able to lock something up, that's the way I see it. Otherwise, Tranchula's whooping his ass on the feet. I don't think he could strike with a six foot fucking two or whatever uh, lightweight. It's just that's a big problem for him, man. So you're going to have to close uh, distance on that Tranchula. I think Tranchula's sniping him up, man. You know, you got different weapons, right? Long range, you got sniper rifles in close. You got the daggers. I think that sniper rifle is going to be working. That long, straight right hand, that big head kick. Jalen Turner can hit you from anywhere in that cage. I'm thinking Jalen Turner tees up Hanato Moicano. And I, I watched Guru's show and I saw MMA Guru picking Money Moicano. I think he did that because he interviewed him, bro. I don't think he believes that shit. I feel like it's because Money Moicano's cool and came on the show. He's giving him a little love, giving a little nod because it's a close fight. It's close, but we all know Jalen Turner is the more dangerous guy on the feet. I think you got to go with Jalen Turner getting this thing done. Um, two out of three rounds, he does more damage. Money Moicano might hit a takedown, might get some control, but he's going to need that submission finish. Otherwise, I think he's going to lose this on the cards. Give me 29-28, two rounds, some damage, a good drop from Jalen Turner. Minus 226 for Jalen Turner. Moicano's plus 190. And then looking at Turner to win by decision, the Finch man's call, is plus 650. Knockouts in the minus range, my brother. So if you go in decision, oh. you're thought of as crazy, my brother. You got plus what? 650 for a Turner decision. Guys, if you're on you Turner by decision like Mike Finch, you better play that prop bet. You better throw that's it down a little something on that, man. That's dope. I mean, yeah, we saw how Phil Dos Anjos grind out a decision against uh, Hanato Moicano. Hanato Moicano hasn't been finished since he fought Hafel Fazeev. That's a dangerous man. You know, Hafel Fazeev, Chan Sung Jung, and Jose Aldo, those are not bad losses, finished losses. And then, um, you know, we saw Jalen Turner go to the split decision with Dan Hooker, go to the split decision with Mataj Gamrod. I think decision's likely here, bro. Let's go. I'm personally going to pick knockout, but I don't hate your mentality here, especially when I look at the odds on that one. You have a rare pick. You have a rare gem. So okay. I, said, I might I, look I, at I that gem. decision. Now that you read that off to me, I might look at that. No, I think it's worth it, my brother. Let's go. Listen, let's keep running up. 
Next fight on the card, we got Sadiq Yusuf versus Diego Lopez. I'm going to go with Diego Lopez. I have to ride with the, uh, I guess, the newfound hype. I do think Sadiq Yusuf is an absolute killer, though, early in the fight, and he's got legit power in his hands. He's a good boxer. But I think Diego Lopez could have a big grappling advantage, and I feel like he's okay on the feet. I don't know how this fight's going to end up looking. I mean, we can guess, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to guess that Sadiq Yusuf's power is intense in the first round, but he's unable to find the Diego Lopez kill shot. I think Diego Lopez could drag him to the ground, even pulling guard. The issue is when you try and be creative against somebody with the athleticism of Sadiq Yusuf from bottom, you could get your face beat in because Yusuf's strong and his ground and pounds legit. Even though he's not necessarily known for it, he's a power striker. I wouldn't be, want to be on my back with Yusuf throwing heavy shots. I think there's a way that Lopez can win. Decision or submission make the most sense here mm -hmm. in a very interesting fight. I mean, officially now, I'm, I'm like forgetting what I wrote down, bro. I have it written down right here. Give me one second. My official call, which I discussed earlier in the week, I went, Lopez, he's live for a submission. But it wasn't like I'm saying sub is a lock. We could end up going three rounds. I'm going with Lopez. Lopez is such a beast, man. How fun is he to watch? Who doesn't like watching Lopez get in a fist fight, man? He is dangerous on the feet. He's dangerous on the ground. He's trying to finish fights. It's dope to watch. And Sadiq Yusuf, you know, at times it might be a little too patient, might get slapped with some shots and might not respond. I like what you said about the ground and pound. It's true. You don't want to see Lopez getting so wild that he ends up on his back too much because you could imagine him losing a round like that. But um, Lopez is dangerous enough on the feet where bro i think he might finish this guy you say club and sub that's aj loves going club and sub give me club and sub for lopez here i believe he'll do damage on the feet he'll make sadiq yusuf you know try to get a little desperate and that's where he catches next that's where he gets good positions uh maybe he even climbs on the back so club and sub lopez in a good fight who does not love watching this dude fight um, you know, as far as betting on him goes, he's a little wild and crazy for me. Like he will get finished, you know, um, is Sadiq Yusuf the guy? Nah, bro. Give me Lopez. Give me submission. I like Lopez. I like sub. I like win for the Lopez side. Lopez by sub, my brother, plus two, seven, five Lopez by decision plus four, seven, five. Okay. Those are some calls. Those are some ideas. I, I, you want me to take a shot at one? I mean, shit, I like submission. I like money line. What was the straight money line? Straight money line is not awful. You got minus 135, bro. Minus 135. Yeah, we might we might look at that. Um, Like I said, you know, you want to bet on reliable guys. Lopez does kind of, uh, you know what's reliable with Lopez? That you're going to enjoy the damn fight. Yeah, I agree. And, and I got to shout out the chat real quick. Chat, shout out to all you savages. Big W's in the chat for you guys. Also, people watching, let's run the likes up. We're almost at 50. Your boy wants to see triple digits. We got a sponsor now. I want to keep it classier on the show, Mike Finch. So we hit 100 likes. I'm not going to rip the pen like a bum. I'm going to hit the savage stick on the side. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get 100 likes up in Holy here so your boy can enjoy shit. himself. That's Holy it. shit. Should I grab a drink? Maybe I need to grab a drink. Grab a drink, my man. You do whatever you want. This is 300. This, this is the show to enjoy. We're going to talk and have a great breakdown. It's beautiful. I'm telling you, Lopez, for us, he's coming through. I think he's winning this thing. Sadiq Yusuf's heavy-handed, punches chance early for sure, but I think Lopez is, is smart, man. He went three rounds with Evlov and arguably won the fight on short notice. On short notice. Come on. Very impressive Come shit. And, and yeah, Evloev, obviously a different style than Sadiq Yusuf, but uh, the kid's impressive for sure. I call him a kid. He's probably older than me. I don't know. Uh, but you know, very impressive and, and very exciting. Uh, you know, my buddy Kevin's going to be there live. Like, dude, I, he's going to love this shit. Like he's this, these type out. of fights, this, this is going to be cool. Watching Lopez live has got to be fun. I think he's a finisher, man. And, and he'll probably stick to his finishing ways at this level. Agreed. Let's go. Listen, let's keep running up the car. Finch and I both on Diego Lopez. Next fight. We got Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison, a fight that early when it was announced was shafted. But I personally want to see what happens. Eight. I'm not anticipating the greatest war ever. Maybe I'm wrong. It's the greatest fight of all time. But in all actuality, likelihood, no. 
I think that it's going to be interesting to see Kayla Harrison from the judo base take on Holly Holm. Holly Holm, obviously, is uh, the Ronda Rousey silencer. And I don't know. There's always been silencer. subtle comparisons of Kayla Harrison to a Ronda Rousey. And I'm interested to see how the fight with Holly plays out. Now, Holly's also in her 40s now. This is not Holly Holm, you know, eight, nine years ago. I think that we're going to see Kayla Harrison, if she's on point at 135, making the weight as a demon to deal with. I think she's going to be taking Holly down and controlling from top. I think she's going to be working against the cage. And I think that you're going to see Kayla Harrison win a decision over the great Holly Holm. And uh, which should be a fun stylistic matchup as far as for me, it's going to be fun because high tier ladies, cool to see the matchup. That's it. Are you trying to say this is Holly Holm versus Ronda Rousey too? It's like not, but it's the closest thing you'll get to it, right? Fair enough. You've got Kayla, has all the hype, the judo gold medalist. It's not the same fight, right? Because Ronda Rousey was the UFC champion and she was undefeated. But Kayla Harrison's got some steam on the hype train. We, we can't argue. I just got one loss and she already beat that girl twice before. And Pacheco's really fucking good. Late night tip says I look like a maitre d' at Red Lobster. I look like I own the fucking Red Lobster, okay? It's my Red Lobster, sucker, all right? I'm running a chain of them. Um, listen, man, I feel like the lobster in this one has to be Holly Holm because of her age, but not just because of her age. It's because she, her, her grappling defense has always been strong, but I feel like she's going to get stuck on that wall against, against a Kayla Harrison. I think she's going to get, you know, uh, uh, taken down. Eventually it'll break. Like, you know, she was defending takedowns really well against my Bueno Silva ends up getting choked on the fence. I think Kayla Harrison can find a way to get inside, get that trip. Holly Holm trained for Ronda Rousey really well. And one of the things she did, she figured this out with Mike Winklejohn is she kept her lead foot outside of Ronda's lead foot. So Southpaw versus, versus Orthodox, you stay outside of the fighter's lead foot and they're lined up for your straight cross the whole night. The head kicks were landing all night. Ronda Rousey was out there lost. I teach people that all the time and I tell them to watch that fight. I don't think Kayla Harrison's going to make a mistake like that. She trains at a world-class team. She's She's got a lot of MMA experience now. She's pretty comfortable on the feet, and I do think that she eventually drags Holly Holm to the ground. Holly Holm just had to defend maybe two or three takedown attempts from, from Ronda, and it was Ronda trying to grab her from far away. I think that at, at a 40-something-year-old Holly Holm against a, a Kayla Harrison, Kayla's going to find her way into that clinch, and when she does, Kayla's just so damn powerful in that clinch, and her technique is beautiful beautiful. Now, Holly Holm is pretty good at defending the judoka. So let's say this goes to a decision. Let's say this goes long. Obviously, Kayla Harrison, you know, it's her coming out party. So she's going to want to finish. She's going to want an emphatic win here, especially because all you mofos are just hating, hating when. So what was this? The main event? No, we're not even on the main card yet. And you guys are shitting on this fight. I don't know what their problem is. Who has a problem with Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison? This is a straight up treat. Okay. Holly Holm hasn't shown her age enough for me to pick finish, right? Holly Holm is still capable of winning this fight, and the odds are kind of wide. So anybody on Holly Holm, you're not nuts. So to me, and I saw your other show, AJ, I agree 100%. It's not bettable. It's just unfortunate that the odds are so wide. Harrison is minus 440 as a favorite, while Holly Holm at plus 340. But like Mike said, Nothing's telling me Holmes easy to dust. She's gonna get subbed up. Like I know Bueno Silva caught her in a weird submission, but not to say I'm not gonna say it was a fluke, but it's unlikely to happen again. I think over two and a half is live, but minus one five five, maybe you're touching that in a parlay. Kayla Harrison is a minus four forty favorite. I do think she wins. I really feel good about Kayla getting it done, but the odds suck for a fight, uh, you know, of this type of competitiveness. You know, like that's too wide for me. I'll just say it right here. It's too wide for me. I'm not touching it. All right. Respect, bro. Respect. Well, for me, in a parlay, we could discuss some things, but longer shot. Longer shot. By the way, everybody at UFC Jim Rosemead, parlay time. Uh, they love they're it, all bro. singing it. They're singing they're it. They're all singing it. They love it. Hey, they're shout singing out. They had me singing it on my way out today. So bro, we, we need to make a go record. Host show. I should be on Apple Music. I'll be listening to it all the time. I, I already talked to a uh, to a producer, so 
Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. Yeah, I did. And I'm gonna be in the the song too, right? You know, of I gotta. Course, I, of course, I'm okay. gonna. This is my first music uh, drop, bro. I'm an artist now. Officially, I can say MMA YouTuber slash, you know, bare knuckle king of picks slash Record, recording artist, studio recorded artist. You know, number one label breaker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a cover, but yeah, it's gonna happen, yeah. man. Uh, so stay tuned for the parlay time mm -hmm. song, folks. We're on Kayla Harrison. Nothing to see here. That's it. Let's go. Next fight on the card, we got Calvin Cater versus Al Jemima Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Pause. Listen, we got Calvin Cater versus Al Jermaine. And uh I'm picking Calvin Cater, my brother. I like the hands of Cater. I'm curious how Sterling's grappling looks up a weight class. He looks pretty filled out for 45. I respect the physique. He's fucking stacked. But if Calvin Cater's takedown defense holds up, you can't tell me that Aljo strikes with him. Calvin Cater's boxing's way better. I know Cater's been out for a bit. Unfortunate loss or Arnold Allen injury. But fight before that, I thought that he won against Josh Demet and he lost the decision. But I really did believe that he won that fight. So it doesn't seem like Calvin Cater is completely out of the top tier of the featherweight division. A win over, you know, Aljamain Sterling would be huge. But I think they are setting it up for an opportunity with Sterling surpassing a guy that has been at the upper echelon of uh, 45 for a long time. I'm picking Calvin Cater, though. I think Cater can touch him up on the feet a bit. I think it's a hard fight. I'm going to lean decision, but knock out a decision. I could see Cater catching him. You could see him catching him on the feet, no? Yeah. Like, I, right away, I'm like, okay, Aljamain Sterling. But I heard your pick when I was driving today, and I'm like sitting on it. And I think Calvin Cater can outstrike Aljamain Sterling. And who has taken Calvin Cater down? Real question. Has anybody ever taken him down? I can get your stats, but his takedown defense, for the most part, holds up really well. It's nice, right? He's yeah. a wrestler, first and foremost. That's how he got into mixed martial arts. He started as a wrestler. You saw him use that wrestling against Giga Chikadze, who's super dangerous. You know, I've spent many hours at King's MMA. Giga Chikadze's knocked people out with knees to the face in that gym. It ain't easy taking down Giga Chikadze. He made it look easy. He really tired Giga out, and um, that is a very dangerous man to be able to control. Let's just say it, a lot more dangerous than Aljamain Sterling. Different matchup, though, because Aljo's also a wrestler. And, brother, if you can take down Olympic gold medalist Henry Cejudo on the fence, I think that's the key. So I think Aljamain gets a couple key takedowns, win, wins this decision. But AJ's got me doubting it enough to not touch it. Calvin Cater is legit. Calvin Cater could come away with this dub. If you're looking for a dog, it's an interesting one. Listen, Grimey, I got to bring you up. Thank you for two months of membership. AJ getting cut out of the rights to the party. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah. I, make sure. I don't give a fuck either. I just cut him out. Yeah, I feel like I'm dealing with Conor McGregor on the other side. Holy shit, I feel like you know I'm him. I'm Listen, let me right say on. this, Finch. You know who took down Calvin Cater? Zabit took him down once. And ah, Chris, Chris Fishgold took right. him down. Once. He knocked him out in the first. Hey, um, Zabit, though? Go. That's it. That's the only takedown. Oh. He has not been taken down since 2019, my brother. So Calvin Cater's takedown defense holds up. Granted, he hasn't fought in a bit, so I'm kind of maybe overselling it. Those of you who know, know Zabit Maga Shapedov, or however you say that crazy last name, my man Zabit <laughs> is phenomenal, okay? And um, I feel like Zabit uh, uh, got him early, too. It wasn't the Calvin Cater we have today, you know? Calvin Cater today... This guy is much, much more weathered, experienced, you know, weathered in a good way. Like, like he can, he's durable. He, he can grind through a five round fight. He's done it already. Um, he had that awful fight against Max Holloway, but you learn from shit like that. And I feel like he's going to be much more ready for a, a fight of this magnitude. So we got a better Calvin Cater today too. And just Zabit is incredible. If any of you guys don't know who Zabit is, you're just tuning in for UFC 300. You're more of a casual fan. Do yourself a favor. Check out. Zabit, my man in his prime is dope. He quit because he was a doctor. I saw him at Bellator in the hotel. He's like cornering fighters. He's still in the game. Zabit could have been the champ. Zabit's gas tank was always a big question. Calvin Cater got the third round. In a five-round fight, I'd pick Calvin Cater over him back then. Damn. I got a rep with the guy, Calvin Cater. I'm a Calvin Cater fan, I'd say, even though he that. hasn't fought in a minute. New but England cartel, right? Yeah, I always like him, bro. I, I like Cater a lot, man. He's a dog. 
And uh, I think he could put it on Aljo. So I am going underdog against my brother Finch here. First disagreement of the night. Finch is on Aljo, who's minus 170. Not a huge line, but he is the favorite. Calvin Cater plus 145 underdog. I like the straight money line underdog here. I think Calvin can wrap, my brother. I think Calvin could wrap. It's an interesting touch. Uh, the odds aren't crazy wide, though. And you're talking about the former champ. I mean, he had a bad night against Sugar Sean O'Malley. But again, he's taken down Henry Cejudo. He's taken down everybody. I bet he could take down Calvin Cater on the fence and uh, stay safe enough on the outside. He's on a the small feet, fry. He's a little guy. He's a little he's guy? A little guy is going to take him down? Yeah, I think he's taking All Calvin right. down on the fence. All right. All right. We shall see. I'm going Calvin Cater, my brother. Finch man. Going Al Jermaine Sterling. And let's keep running up. Next fight on the card, Mike Finch. I got a lot on the line with this one. I'll talk about it later on. I ain't going to say nothing right this second. Oh. Yee Prohashka versus Alexander Rakic. It's more than just a bet. I'll tell you later. I'll tell you on the line. If you don't know, then you'll find out with the lock section. I don't know. I am riding with Alexander Rakic to win, my brother. I'm picking him. I think that he is going to outwork Prohashka. And I also think there's takedown options for him. Prohashka, I don't forget the Glover fight where he didn't look all that impressive. And then coming back, he did get knocked out by Pereira pretty clean. Obviously, Pereira is very good, but Prohashka is not defending the low kick well. Rakic has a nice low kick. And I also really believe Rakic could mix in takedowns here. I'm personally going to lean towards Rakic by a decision, which maybe is crazy with these two savages facing off. But I'm going with Rakic. The money line is not bad at all. Look, Yuri Prohaska is extremely dangerous. He brings a lot of pressure. He has a lot of weapons. I know he just had so shoulder surgery, and I know some people are doubting him because of that. I'm not, man. And, and I see a lot of people taking Rakic, a lot of smart people too. So don't get me wrong. This is not my lock of the night, but Yuri Prohaska should not be slept on, man. He is he is extremely dangerous. Wins over you know Dominic Reyes, Vulcan Ozdemir, Fabio M M Maldonado. Say what you want. Great boxer, great boxer. King Mo Muhammad Lawal, Glover to share it to win the title. Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. He's fought everybody. Didn't he beat uh, the Bellator champ? Where did he fight the Bellator champ at? He fought Vadim Nemkov, didn't he? He beat him. He beat him a long time ago. Bro, Vadim Nemkov is phenomenal. So uh, Yuri Prohaska has been there, done that. I do think Yuri Prohaska wins this fight. Rackage could rack up some leg kicks. That makes sense to me. But in a three-rounder with Yuri Prohaska, brother, I don't think it'll be enough, man. I think Yuri's going to come and take whatever whatever damage he gets to the calf and the leg. He'll come forward and he'll fucking do a spinning elbow, a flying knee. He's going to make some shit happen. Uh, the samurai is real. Rackage, all right? Don't tell me he ain't a real samurai in 2024 that's as samurai as you can get my friend he's gonna get in that cage he's gonna elbow him in the face give me yuri prohaska brother he might knock him out I respect the call and I, I do think yuri's a samurai what's interesting is my pick here is not on the fighter who i like more yeah. i'm a big prohaska fan but i really feel like rocket's style might be hard for him okay. i know the jan blahovitz fight he lost granted he got injured in that fight fucked up his knee He's now coming back. If he comes back looking similar to that level, and then we get a Prohashka like we saw against uh, Pereira, I really do think Rakic is live for the, the scorecards, taking him home with a W. I think it might be mixing in takedowns. I don't think it'll be the most impressive thing. Odds for the fight, bro, even Stevens now. Minus 115 to minus 105. Rakic, the ever so slight favorite. These lines might flip. I like I like Prohaska too because AJ he's got more experience and he's 31. He's my age. That's We're funny. in our prime, brother. You know, I everybody knows Rakic is in his prime at 32, but Yuri Prohaska at 31 years old, brother, I think he's still the future of the division. I do. And um this is a cool fight. They're going to strike and it's going to be walk right into Yuri's game. So I think Yuri, Yuri's live to finish this thing and I think Rakic if he wins it's going to be a decision. Let's go. Let's, I am going to go decision. Rakic, okay. for him to win a decision, the prop of it is plus 250. Not all that good. But close money, money line. Interesting fight. I'm mm -hmm. excited as hell for it. It's also our feature prelim, my guy. So you know what that means, my brother? It's time for the main card opener. If you guys haven't yet, smash the likes. If you're new to the channel, subscribe it up. Bo Nickel, Cody Brundage. 
throwing down. And a lot of people say, why is this on the main card? Why isn't this a prelim fight X, Y, and Z? I think to sell this UFC 300 card, you can't put this on the prelims. UFC casual. Thank you for becoming a member, my brother. Let's go. Big W UFC casual. Fuck yeah. I just saw that. Thank you. My Bo God. Nickel getting served up a, a just a vanilla Sunday. I mean, on a card where every single matchup is pickums, on a card where we're sweating trying to make picks, on a card where who knows who's going to win these fights. Bo Nickel, you're going to give him Cody Brundage, brother. I got Cody Brundage, lock of the night. Of course not. Bo Nickel's going to run him over like he's standing on the freeway. I mean, Cody Brundage has lost grappling matches to like, what's his name? What's his name? Cedric was Dumas. Yeah, Dumas. Bro, you've got to be kidding me. Okay? Bo Nickel looked good against Gordon Ryan. Okay? We're going Bo Nickel all day and it ain't even close. Bo Nickel's going to destroy him. It's a one-way traffic type of fight. The odds reflect completely that. And the reason it's a main card opener is because they want the fans to be introduced to, you know, somebody they're building as the new generation. Bo Nickel is definitely a fighter the UFC have put some steam behind, and they want to see him win and look good on the pay-per-view card. is probably the best strat. And to sell the pay-per-view, Prohashka versus Rakic is a good way to do such a thing with the feature prelim. That's a smart strategy, not Bo Nickel and Brundage as a feature prelim here. Facts. I mean, I, I, I would have put this thing like, you know, second, third fight of the night. I think the UFC sees a future champion in Bo Nickel, and that's got to have something to do with the, with the placement. This matchup is not worthy of the placement, though. Uh, you know, I don't want to be too disrespectful to Cody Brundage, but what the fuck, bro? Come on. Bo Nickel could get challenged more than this right now. They're really taking care of their boy, Bo. Awesome. Oh, Bo, Bo. Nah, 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 nah. You guys, Bo Burnham fans? Bo Burnham fans in the house. Raise your hand up. Come on, Bo Burnham fans. They're taking care of him like they're taking care of Bo Burnham. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's going on here. I think this is clearly the easiest matchup to pick on this card. Who the hell is going to pick Cody Brundage? AJ, how wide are these odds? Minus 2,300 Bo Nickel plus 1,100 Cody Brundage. But by sub... Bo Nickel's minus 140. Minus 140 sub. Hit me with the money line again. Minus 2,300. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow. 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 Uh, I think Bo kind of wants knockouts now, dude. He's kind of getting a little froggy. You know, he might leap. But listen, the knockout's there too. Knockout, you actually got plus 130. Wow. All right. So just lay two lines down, knockout and fucking sub one or the other. <laughs> right. I mean, then he ends up fucking subbing them and you're kicking yourself for throwing too much. I I don't know. I don't know. I'd say pick one like a savage and ride with your fucking uh, your hands right. up high and your chin tuck. It ain't a decision, right? I'd no. be very surprised if this thing went all three. Fight ends inside distance. Let's talk about that fight we'll ending about inside of the distance. We got minus 1600. There we go. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. I know. No. I know. No. Un it ain't unbettable it. money line odds for sure. Unbettable. It is what it is, bro. It is what it is. We know who's probably winning it. Bo Nickel's going to get it done. Let's keep running up the card. Let's get to our next fight, which is a super fight. This is normally a co-main event. This is a main event in some parallel universe. This is a title fight. We got Charles Oliveira versus Armand Sorukian. And earlier in the show... I was asked, who do I want to win? Who do I want to win? Charles Oliveira. I would like to see him destroy Armand yeah, Sarukian. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, this is not the who I want to win fight. Who I want to win pick show. Mm. This is who I'm going to predict to win. I'm picking Armand Sarukian because he will be willing to follow Charles Oliveira to the ground. Oliveira is very unlikely to submit him from bottom position. And I also think Armand Sarukian striking is going to be there. When you look at Charles Oliveira's impressive title run, he always absorbed significant amounts of damage. And when he took on guys that weren't willing to follow him to the floor for the most part, that's where he's getting these sick Ws. Then you have him fight Makachev. It's a competitive fight, good fight, but granted, a fight he was losing throughout, and he got submitted. Benil Dariush is somebody who was willing to play the grappling game with Charles Oliveira, but was a dead man in the stand-up. 
I just think Armand Sarukian is too well-rounded for him at this point. And I hate that I'm going against Charlie O. But like I said, it's not who I want. It's who I think. I hope I'm wrong. But I'm picking Armand Sarukian ground and pound stoppage. I mean, both of these guys smoked poor Benil Daryush, my neighbor. Um, so, you know, they looked really good in that matchup. Both of them did. You got to think that Armin Sarukian's a tough test here for Charles Oliveira. Now, that being said, I see some people who are super heavy on Armin Sarukian. Brother, Charles Oliveira is da, 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 dangerous. The knees, the hooks, the chokes. My man Charles has got a really nasty game. So you could imagine a world where Armin's trying to bang that left hook he's getting happy with, eats that knee up the center. Charles Oliveira storming forward, takes that back, slaps on that rear naked strangle, and that's all she wrote. That's live for sure. Make no mistake about it. It's a fight. But Armin Sarukian has hit something of a prime here. I have never seen him look that good. How good he looked against Benil Daryush, man, he's on fire. So you got Charles Oliveira off the nice dub. You got Armin Sarukian off the nice dub. This could easily end up being a fight of the night candidate, right? On a, on a card where there's plenty of them, I'm on a card where the BMF title's next. These are two bad mother. Fuckers. I believe that this is going to be a really good fight. Fun one to watch. I have to lean towards Armin Sarukian. Armin Sarukian having the wrestling advantage, having a strength advantage. You would have to think that, that, that Charles Oliveira is going to sub him if you're going to pick Charles because you could see Armin Sarukian getting him down to the floor. And AJ made a great point in his other breakdown. Other guys weren't, you know, they were, they were, they were hesitating to take Charles to the floor. But AJ, the good point is, because they couldn't, right? If Justin Gaethje started wrestling Charles Oliveira, he's getting choked. Like, Justin Gaethje cannot grapple with Charles Oliveira. Armin Sarukian, I believe, in a 15-minute fight with Charles Oliveira, can get out of it without getting submitted. The worst mistake he could make, honestly, is trying to slang and bang with him on the feet. A club and sub is more likely for Charles. So it's a lean towards Armin, Armin Sarukian, but make no mistake, it's a slight one. Charles Oliveira still got that dog in him. He could still bite. This is a dope fight. Give me the guy who can control where the fight takes place, the guy who's coming off of the best performance of his life. I'll take Armin Sarukian with a little more power in his hands and, and, and a little bit better with the wrestling and the control. Let's go. Armin Sarukian's the call for us both, minus 210. I love Charlie O, but I just have to go Sarukian because of the factors that you're bringing up, the wrestling advantage, the fact that he's primed right now and he's in, you know what, his slightly late 20s, minus 210 for Sarukian, with Oliveira at plus 180. Now, Mike, are you interested in the knockout prop for Sarukian? It's plus 185. Plus 185? I'm not interested. No, he's chilling. This is a fight to just chill because you're rooting I for feel Charles. Like it is, brother. This is a fight. It's a you fight. know, people think Charles yeah. is done. Charles ain't done. No. You know, I don't think it's going down like the Islam Makachev fight is, despite no. all of the similarities between Islam Makachev and Armin Sarukian. I right. think we're going to get a better Charles Oliveira than that. And I think we're going to get an Armin Sarukian um, who, who is of a similar level. I mean, he's not he's not Islam, but that was a hell of a fight when they had it back in the day. They're both better now. You know, oh. for sure, Armin's hands are better so I, than they were. So I could see like KO being live. But you're going to you're going to you're going to get in that fire with with. With Charles Oliveira, you'd get burnt too. Burnt the fuck up. Yeah, I agree. Listen, I personally am on the chill on the outside for this one, but damn, I'm going to be enjoying the fuck out of fuck it as yeah. it happens. <laughs> fuck hey, yeah. we're 17 likes away from 100. The Savage Stick is getting brought out. I know the people love it, so make sure you smash the likes. Let's get the 100. I'll do a rip for the people, and uh, we'll get a little fucking crazy before we get to that main event. But let's keep running up the car, Mike Finch. We got another lightweight battle. It's our feature bout of the night. It's for the BMF championship. We got Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway. I love the fight. I can't wait to see what happens. And early on when they first called it, I was really leaning towards Gaethje. But as I've settled in, as I've dug in a little more, and then even just seeing Max Holloway's commitment to being a 55er, I'm picking Max Holloway to win a decision over the five rounds. I think he has a boxing advantage here over Gaethje. That's something that I think gets lost with the impressive wins for Gaethje is the fact that I don't think he's the most high pedigreed boxer. He has got some power in his hands. He swings some really hard shots, at times wild shots, and he gets off balance. 
His head kick knockout of Poirier was absolutely sick, but let's not act like that Poirier fight was him dusting Poirier up until the head kick. That head kick ended it, and it was a pretty competitive matchup in the round before, round one. And now he's taking on Max Holloway, who I think is going to be a tricky stylistic matchup for him. Speed advantage, volume advantage, also sparring again. My brother, Max Holloway sparring for this fight. You know what that means? He's taking it as serious as he's taking a fight in very long time. I think he's putting his heart and soul into this. And doesn't it just make sense? Max Holloway gets the BMF championship. Come on. Of course, man. Of it's course. Destiny. And, it's and, and how, how are you going to fight Justin Gaethje and not spar? You know what I'm saying? He's got to spar, brother. He's got to spar for this one. And, uh, man, I'm already hearing the... I feel like Max blessed Holloway representing Hawaii. He's coming for the dub. All right. He's got the he's got the Maui fires and behind them or some shit for the walkout. They need to do some shit at that at that. What's that dome? Yeah, they, yeah, it's here. Oh man, they need to do some dope shit for Max if he defends this BMF title next. Because I'll tell you what. It's a great matchup for Max Holloway. Smart money's on Max Holloway. I'm glad you changed your pick because I'd be up in here roasting you, AJ. But AJ's smart as fuck. He looked at that tape. AJ, what'd you see when you watch tape? Bro, I see Justin Gaethje out of position in his head there to be hit by somebody with the straight shots like Holloway. Justin Gaethje thrives when he gets somebody wild, when he gets somebody who's trying to take him down. Max Holloway is going to throw way more punches, and he's going to go high-low. He's going to step off the center line. I love teaching the Max Holloway lead hook because he moves laterally. He'll step side to side. And so you can imagine when Max touches him with something, he'll keep touching him, right? He'll stay on him. And there's a certain pressure he keeps where it's not like he's always walking forward, but Max Holloway keeps you in a constant constant state of anxiety. I stole that line from Owen Roddy, Conor McGregor's coach. He says, you always want to keep them in a constant state of anxiety. Perfectly said. And that's how Max Holloway fights. He's always right there. He's always letting his hands go. He's always teeing you up. His output's really high. And for a guy like Justin Gaethje with a head the size of a watermelon, he looks like the lightweight Tito Ortiz. I believe that head's going to get teed up. And when Max rocks him, he won't get stupid. He won't get crazy. He's going to keep mixing it up. Max Holloway's got a style we haven't really seen Justin Gaethje conquer. Remember, Dustin Poirier had success against both of these guys. Looking back, Back at those fights, though, the matchup difference between a Poirier and a Holloway and a Gaethje and a Holloway is big because Gaethje throw, you know, Israel Adesanya says they throw and hope I aim and fire. Sometimes you get Justin Gaethje throwing and hoping. And when you do that against Max Holloway, you pay the price. It's a different type of matchup. He doesn't throw those straight, nice shots. His shit's always looping. He's ducking his head down low. I could see Max Holloway letting his hands go. They're about the same height, about the same reach. I I think Max ends up using his style to his advantage in this fight. It's a tailor-made fight for Max. And don't tell me he's the dog. My brother, before I tell you that, I got to shout out Darth Bane for dropping us $4.99. Thank you for getting the Donald train rolling, my brother, who got the dopest custom shorts on this main car, boys. Thank you. I love the content. Thank you, Darth Bane, for the $4.99. Listen. Who's got the dopest custom shorts on this main card? Probably, hopefully, Max, right? I think Max with the florals, maybe Pereira, one of the two. I don't know. I'd say let's go, let's go Pereira for me. We'll go Max with Finch. There we go. Look, I see people saying this. I'll pull you up, Chad. Uh, Gaethje going to chew those legs up. When When is he chewed legs up in the UFC? I mean, it's been a while, dude. He was chewing legs up five, seven years ago, but like 2024, Justin Gaethje's a boxer. And, and he, he's going against the guy who's, I'm the best boxer in the UFC. I'm the best boxer in the UFC. He's going to be up against a guy who's got a high output and is going to tear him up, man. Yes, Justin Gaethje should be slanging and banging those leg kicks, especially since, you know, the chances of getting taken down are pretty low. But AJ, could you imagine Max Holloway mixing it up? Because Justin Gaethje's game is interesting, but I'll tell you what, his jujitsu, not very good in a straight grappling match. I'm taking Max Holloway by submission. What a cool wrinkle. Uh, in the game, it would be if Max decided to grapple. I ain't counting on it. I don't think he'll need it. Max Holloway via a high diet, a high volume of punches. The odds for the fight, Mike Finch, the dog is Max Holloway. 
He's currently sitting at plus 138. It's a great line, my brother. Plus 138, that's beautiful. Justin Gage, he's minus 158. Holloway to get it done on the cards is plus 275. Submission for Holloway is plus 1,200. Big, big, big change. Yeah. We hit 100 likes, Finch. Oh, shit. You know what that means? Listen. AJ's got no saxophone, savage right? Stick. We switched instruments. Savage stick. We got the tool? Savage stick. Little savagery. I'm going to do it off to the side. I give you a nice. Oh, all dressed up and everything. Jeez. Look at this guy. For your entertainment, folks. Listen. Savage shit only up in here. That's it. There it is. Oh, he lights it up. Oh, we're using a fumar. For 300, we need the real smoke. I'm not hitting no pen for 300 on this freaking <laughs> fight companion. Are you kidding me? Fight companion. What I'm saying? This podcast? Come on. Come on, folks. Yeah, I can't even do the fight companion. I'm going to be at a billionaire's ranch this weekend. How about Ooh. that? Yeah. Ooh. Should I be saying? I probably shouldn't Don't be. Don't say nothing. Tell me later. I probably shouldn't be out here dropping his name like no, that. No, actually, I wouldn't even tell nobody because they'll come find you. Listen, man, <laughs> right. coming out the finch, man. Right? Yeah, he's in California. I'll be at his ranch on Saturday night. That's so pretty cool. I will not be on the fight companion, but you guys can come hang out with AJ, okay? Let's go. I'll be here. Listen, I'll be here all fucking card long for UFC 300, and I absolutely can't wait. But you know what's crazy? I'm thinking for a minute to myself. I'm like, okay. This is our co-main event. We're about to get to the main event. I was like, wait a second. No, it isn't. This is the feature bout of the night. We still got a whole co-main event to break down. Finch partnering with Bezos. Jeffrey Bezos. Jeffrey Bezos. Bo Burnham keeps coming up tonight, man. One more time. One more time. If you haven't watched Inside by Bo Burnham on Netflix, correct yourself. Bo Burnham. All right. Bo Burnham. There we go. Bo Burnham. Let's keep running, my brother. We're about to get to the next fight. It's a co-main event. It's a championship fight at 115. It's Wei Li Zhang. Wait a second. Let's pop the Zin in for this one. Shout out to the Zins. If you guys got a nicotine addiction, probably it's from the Zin pouches. Listen, let me tell you something. Zin, <laughs> hit us up for the sponsorship. We'll give you a nice shout. Uh, Versus Yan Xiaonan. I'm going with Wei Li Zhang. I feel like she could win by submission here. On the ground, Yan Xiaonan showed... She was eh when Carla Esparza destroyed her. Mm. Destroyed her. Mm. And look what Wei Lee did to her Esparza on the ground. Oh, MMA math. Okay, I'm not using math. I'm just using my fucking eyes, and I'm telling you something that happened. I think that Wei Lee is significantly more well-rounded. Yan's got good striking for sure. She can fucking kickbox. You sitting there and strike with her, you can get knocked out. Right. But I think Wei Lee mixes in the wrestling. And I think that is what leads her to the win. And I do think it could be possible for her to lock up a sub, but decision's not crazy. We need to get it done, becomes a parlay piece, not a straight money line, because she's a wide favorite, nasty wide favorite. We'll talk about the odds in a bit. But I think Whaley's en route to winning. I think that her takedowns can kind of limit Yan Xiaonan's stand up a little bit. And it's not like Whaley isn't a good striker, but I do expect her to attack with takedowns and clinch work. And I think she can wear on Yan inside. And I think she's en route to getting it done. I'm going with Whaley and still, my brother. Whaley's wrestling for some reason is still underrated. Everybody just thinks Whaley the striker, Whaley the striker. We've had him on the show, folks. She's got a wrestling coach by the name of Captain Eric Alberison. And Captain Eric has changed this woman's life. Whaley mixes in takedowns with striking better than any woman on the planet and she is the ufc champion because of it she's going to be able to take down yan shaunan at will and that'll be a big difference here yes yan is going to be able to make the striking competitive but when you blend in the takedowns when you blend in the mixed martial arts Wei Li is going to beat her ass she's going to be able to get to the top position and dominate i i think she could finish her by submission i'd be a little cautious with that but that money line four to one whatever it needs to be be is looking really good to me. I think Wei Li is going to end up dominating this thing and running away with it because Yan Shanan will not be able to stop the takedown onslaught. Wei Li's takedowns are nasty, and the way she mixes them in with strikes makes her unlike any other woman Yan Shanan can fight. Yan Shanan struggled with wrestlers. This is going to look a whole nother level, man. I think Wei Li can end up running away with this thing with spamming the takedowns. I think that's a good strategy for Wei Li. Spam the takedown. You'll probably put Yan Xiaonan on the back. In the dab mall, 
Shout out to you. Is it the Dab Maui or the Dab Mall? Looks like the Dab Mall. I'm doing a Dab Darth Mall. Mall. You know, Darth Darth Mall, Mall. Dab he's ripping Mall. dabs on the side as he's doing the fucking uh, Jedi. Mm -hmm. I guess I don't know Jedi. Whatever the fuck shit. He's got the lightsaber. He's twirling on his finger and smoking. Got a my lightsaber over there, Dab Mall. What, what the fuck? Why don't you have it, Mike Finch? Don't you bring it out. This is three hundred. It is three hundred, but uh, it's May the fourth. Be with you. You get oh, it that next one. We'll do you. that. So we'll yeah. bust it out in May. I'll have to. I'll have to get uh, a little something, something, man. It'll Listen, be dope. Dad, well, thanks, dope. bro. I'm it a Star be. Wars dork for sure. Listen, Star Wars is a legendary saga, my man. These odds, yeah, though, they ain't legendary. <laughs> <laughs> minus 420? No, I'm looking at it. I mean, minus 420 is if you're lucky. Right now, we got minus 510. See? It's wide, my brother. It, it's something that you put in the long shot parlays. I am confident that she wins. It's just the money line's unplayable. Then you got to, okay, am I going to prop it up? If I call submission, I'm a genius, plus 300. But if it doesn't happen, I'm a moron. And then I'm kicking myself when she wins five hard rounds. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I feel like we got to look at money line here because she could just dominate over five. And, um, you know, there is a, there is an opportunity for ground and pound too. So I don't know if the submission's a lock. Um, I could see why people would call submission. I mean, do I want submission? I don't know. I, I, I just caution you guys and money line this one. I think the, uh, the takedowns are what I see. I can't, I can't quite, I'm trying to look into the future. Um, Okay, I'm seeing ground and pound. I'm seeing ground and pound. We're going Whaley TKO. Whaley TKO. Namaste, Mike Finch. There we go. That was beautiful. Plus 165. Mike Finch is actually a yogi on the side. They call uh, yeah, him. I was in Joshua Tree over the weekend. Yogi Joshua Finch. Tree National uh, Park. Anybody motion. who knows what they do in Joshua Tree already knows. I was meditating. You were meditating. You feel enlightened? I feel very enlightened. I feel a little sunburnt. And very enlightened. Thank That's you. Nice. That's nice, my brother. Let's go. Sure. Listen, this fight here should be a good one. I'm excited to see what happens. But you know what I'm more excited for? The main event of UFC 300, which is time to talk about. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you smash the likes. If you're new, why haven't you already subscribed? We're closing in on now 31,000 subscribers. Join. Join MMA experts. I got content every day, live streams every day. At Mike Finch Show. Make sure to subscribe to him as well. I'll make sure it's linked up in the description. Thank you. Because uh, Mike Finch, he needs to drop more videos. I tell him all the time. I don't do this any content. More. I need to start. I need to make well, something. Tonight the after the show. show. Okay, folks. I got everything we set up. I'm running right Mike into Finch, it. I don't know. The Mike Finch, whatever. Mike Finch's favorite fights on the card. I'd, I'd be happy with that. I'm just running through this card and talking about 300, man. Come hang out. All right. Let's go. I'm excited for it, man. Listen, let's talk this fight. It's Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill to cap things off. Wavy, thank you for the four ninety nine. Beautiful to see. A let's w go, Wavy. Mono. Let's go. I'm picking Alex Pereira. I'm going Poetan. I think he's going to catch Jamal Hill with that left hook. Jamal Hill comes in with that rear hand low. And I know the same can be said with Pereira getting caught, obviously, by Adesanya because his hands are low. He has tendencies not to be traditional. But I also think you th uh, with Pereira, you think you think. You know what I think? I think that fucking Pereira's got... The power, but also the kicks. The footwork of Jamal Hill on the opposite front worries me. Add on top of that, that damn Achilles injury. Add on top of that, the fact his legs are going to be getting chopped up. Add on top of the fact Glover Teixeira survived five rounds with him. Like, why would Pereira fall for sure? I mean, he's acting like Pereira's chin is glass. I think Alex Pereira can absorb more punishment than people anticipate. It's just the Adesanya loss at 85, we've developed this idea that he's chinny. I think Poetan Pereira is going to catch Jamal Hill and knock him out viciously. I think he'll defend the title, and I think the fucking world's going mad. It's going to be absolutely scintillating. What do you think, Mike Finch? Look, man, the way that we saw Alex Pejea Poetan have trouble in the UFC is with an overhand right. And who's got the best overhand right in the division? It's Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill. And I know he's coming off the injury, but I understand people looking at Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill thinking that overhand right is going to find a home. Alex Pejea walks forward with his hands down. When you do that, the best shot is... Bang, coming over the top with that right hand. But you know what? Jamal Hill is not 
the best light heavyweight in the world. Jamal Hill is not the second or third best light heavyweight in the world. I don't think Jamal Hill is that good. I am amazed. He is headlining UFC 300. This is what we've got. Bro, bring back prime Chuck Liddell. I feel like him and Jamal Hill go 50-50, right? I don't think Jamal Hill's that good. So I think that Alex Poetan Pahea, he is going to be able to slam those kicks into the thigh, into the calf, slam those knees into the body, even up to the head. I mean, Jamal Hill's pretty tall, but he might be able to get him up there. And I do think that that left hook is going to find a home. He's going to use his right leg and his left hook, and he's going to beat the shit out of Jamal Hill because Jamal Hill kind of sucks. I think Jamal Hill's getting smacked up here. I think that Glover Teixeira was just a little too short and, and, and that Alex Poetan, he's going to be able to extend that lead hook, rip that long low kick. He can fight at a longer range. You saw that Glover struggle with John Jones for the same reason, right? Glover's a great boxer, but he kind of has to close that gap as to where Poetan can walk forward, walk you down, and be able to handle it. So yes, there is a universe where Jamal Hill bangs the overhand right and gets the finish, but this is the most overrated fighter in the UFC right now. Jamal Hill's getting put away. Give me Poetan slamming the right leg, slamming the left hand, and getting a finish. TKO, round two or three. Finch, I love you, but I think Jamal Hill does chuck the down. Dust, I think he does some, bro. Jamal Jamal's very good. I'm picking against him. But Division I think Jamal one all American wrestler, Chuck Liddell. Big overhand right as well, Chuck Liddell. I, I, I think Chuck hits hits hard too. I know that Chuck got old and got knocked out a bunch at the end. Folks, Jamal Hill's not that good. And John Smith is Damn. pissed at me. John, I'm sorry. John, I'm so John. Wait a second. Don't wash he my mouth out. <laughs> With soap, okay, first of all, not good for their health. Who's, who's mouth? What type of torture are you talking about? You want to torture me? You want to torture me? Brother, I have been training jujitsu since I was 10 years old to stop a motherfucker like you from doing some shit like that to me. Okay, John? So don't you dare try to wash my mouth out with soap, but I do appreciate the $10, and you're a gem, John. I'm fucking around. Um, Listen, you, AJ, John. wash my mouth out with soap? Am I, is Listen. The jiu-jitsu training, John Smith's got the father energy. He says, listen, we're putting the soap in. You can't do anything else, my brother. <laughs> That's if it. you it's guys are parenting awesome. like that, you're doing it wrong, okay? <laughs> Damn, bro. You think Jamal Hill would get dusted by Chuck? Or you think they'll go 50-50? I said dusted. I said 50-50. It, it's the same. I you want to see the division good. move on, good. right? Like, let's look at lightweight, right? You Crazy. had, like, Jens Pulver was the lightweight champ, okay? Yeah. Today... It's Islam Makachev. Did the division get better? Yeah. Should it yeah. have? Yeah. yeah. Back in the day, we had Randy Couture, Chuck Liddell. Bro, the light heavyweight division's not much better. I guess, yeah, overall, no. Because I was going to say John Jones, but that's an outlier. Overall, his the champions have gotten better. Well, worse than know, John? I worse. guess you're right. You're right. Jo John Jones was here. This era is not that same level, man. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Now they're trying to kill me. Now they're trying to look. I gotta eat three Tide Pods, bro. I'm not even on TikTok. That's funny as fuck. Actually, I am on TikTok. <laughs> Follow me at Mike Finch MMA. <laughs> Mike Finch is doing the Tide Pod challenge. If Jamal Hill wins, fuck check him out, man. man. He's gonna be in the ER. I afterwards. said he's got the overhand right, but to make no mistake, that's it. Jamal that's Hill no, can't wrestle. Chuck Liddell was a Division One All American wrestler. Okay, so Jamal Hill can't wrestle. Um, what does he got? He, he he his kicks are average. He's just he's kind of fat. He trains at some shitty gym, bro. I I'm okay. sorry. I'm rip. I didn't mean to come here and rip up Jamal Hill. But, uh, Jamal Hill's gonna see this podcast. And be Jamal, enraged. please. Jamal beats me in a fight, but um, look, he lost to Paul Craig. He lost to Paul Craig. That's the jujitsu only. He lost to Paul Craig. Mega Man and Kali have lost to Paul Craig. Paul Craig is a fucking exception here. I'm going off Jamal Hill's performance over Glover, the fact he couldn't put him away. I, I'm picking Pereira, too. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with your take on Pereira to win. I just do think Jamal Hill's solid, man. I think his hands are quick. I think he's long. He's quick. He's powerful. I said quick twice, so maybe he's not as good as I think. I don't know. <laughs>
Russell says, am I the same size I was at? T- I am actually. When I was when I was my so my freshman year of high school, I, I'm I'm weighing in at like 178. I'm the same. I'm like 185. Same size, bro. We sprout up fast in the Finch family. What are you even saying with that? Finch hates Hill. I don't hate him. I have no hate in my heart. I am trying to say that to headline UFC 300, defending the light heavyweight title in 2024. I expect more. That's funny as fuck. Yo. Beer, blood, and body slams. First time getting you guys live. Love the show, and thanks for the picks. Also, I think Hill is coming back too soon. Beer, blood, and body slams. Big W. I just I had to shout you out because you're brand new, and I wanted to give you that that shout on the first show you're checking out. So much love. Hopefully, you subbed it up, bro. Look, Joe Dirt. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be that guy. Okay, I'm not gonna be that guy. But I'll tell you what. Just jujitsu to jujitsu. For sure, my jujitsu is a lot better than Jamal Hill's. He's not that skilled at martial arts. Jamal Hill knocks me out. Don't get me the wrong. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that that he to be the light heavyweight champ in 2024. This is pretty bad. This is pretty bad. Alex Poetan. At least he's got world class striking. And if he's going to strike with, with, with Jamal Hill, they're going toe to toe. Like, you know, I don't think Jamal Hill could take him down if he wanted to. So they're going to go toe to toe. I'm going to go with the world-class striker. Let's go. I'm on the world-class striker too. Pick is the same. We're going Poetan to get it done. The odds for the fight, Pereira's minus 130. Hill's plus 110. And if we're going knockout for Poetan, we're sitting at plus 125 for that one there. Under three and a half rounds, minus 260. Yeah, I mean, I think Poetan can get him out of there, but maybe he's patient. Like, at this point, we, we see him be able to be pretty patient at times, right? So, you know, the, what, what lost him the, the middleweight title is he was getting too aggressive against Adesanya. He was beating the shit out of Israel Adesanya in that fight. Everybody just watches the highlight on Instagram and remembers it that way. Remember how much he was eating up that calf? It was it was dessert. I mean, fight was know, done in the second round if he's more conservative. A hundred percent, hundred percent. And so I believe he learns from that. And and I would be cautious betting uh, over or under on this one. I just like a straight money line on 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 Poetan. I do money line Poetan. I personally thinks the A side. Yeah. I love the fight. I'm very excited to watch it all unfold, man. It's gonna be cool to see. Poetan, I believe, shine dealing with uh, nonetheless a powerful guy in Jamal Hill. Even if, if you know what, if you think he's 50 50 with Chuck Liddell, Chuck Liddell's the former champ. He's got to at least be pretty decent, man. He's got to be pretty decent. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I guess he's decent, but like he's getting credit like he's, you know, in a conversation with what? Are you going to put him up there with a Khabib? Is he as good as George St. Pierre? I don't think it's close, brother. I think the skill level is relatively low and that Poetan's going to show a much more dynamic game. Let's go. Both of us going Poetan for the W in the main event. The show is not over yet though, guys. It's 300. I want to just sit here for a second and just take it all in because this fight is happening in the main event, but we have just an absolutely stacked card. The best card stacked wise ever. Maybe we didn't get the freak show. Finch and I wanted a freak show fight. If you watch UFC 200, if you were around for the 100 era especially, you crave the freak show. Can we get, what about Fedor versus Brock Lesnar? Can I get, can we have some fun? You know? Come on, man. Brock's been on 100. Brock was on 200. I'm sad about this. Um, You know? If Mark Coleman can, you know, pull things out of fires, why can't he fight? I'm joking about the Mark Coleman thing, but, but seriously, give me a fun fight. Could we not? Can we not do something ridiculous? This was the card to let Logan Paul fight somebody on. You know what I mean? Mm. Let's let's get crazy. All right. I guess the mentality now is they don't want to disrespect being a true fighter and throw somebody that's not top caliber on. Do you remember when CM Punk fought? I know. I'm saying now. I'm saying, hey, in 2024, they don't want to mess around with that. So they're done with that. They're never letting another CM Punk in? I think they might be done with the freak shows. If they have another freak show, then my gripe for 300 will be there. But how it's looking right now, I don't think they're going freak show anymore. I think they're going more organized. Best, best, that's it. All right. I mean, some of those fun fights in Pride, I still watch, bro. Yeah, when my buddy true. Sam Adamant comes over, we put on Zulu versus Fedor and laugh our ass cool. off. Like, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? 
So, yeah. all right, we missed the freak show fight. Yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. But listen, we got one more segment. We got money line lock of the night. Money line lock of the night brought to you by Hidden Move. Mike Finch, elaborate a little bit on Hidden Move, sponsoring the lock of the night, sponsoring the show. Look at this box they sent me. Look at that. We're going to open this right after the lock of the night. You know, I might as well do it right now. Let's do the. Let's do the unboxing right now. What do we got? Mike Finch has got some gear here from Hit and Move. All right, not that type of gear. You guys know AJ's a bodybuilder. We're not he's talking got, about he's, that. No, he's, I, you told me you got the gear, my brother. Look at this beautiful stuff from Hit and Move. We really appreciate right. our sponsor, Hit and Move. You guys can use code MONEYLINE to save 20% off. Nice. Look at these beautiful gloves. So Hit and Move makes one pound gloves. So when you're hitting the bag, you want a big old sock and bop around there so you're not mass mashing up your knuckles. Every single time you throw a punch, there's a mini separation of your knuckles. You do that a billion times, you risk having some pain in your hands. So what you want is a big ass pad. And if you're gonna get some pads, they might as well be durable. And this is as durable as it gets. Uh, it's custom leather that that Ozzy sourced himself. Uh, so the, the owner and I are our friends. Uh, he's out there on the East Coast, and I got to talk to him on the phone last week. He's telling me how he created these. You guys will see some of the best boxers in the world are training with these, not even because it's like full sponsorships, right? They are just legitimately buying these because these are the best in the game right now. Check these out. Hit and move, and a use promo code MONEYLINE. You'll save 20%. I can't wait to try all these toys. I'm waiting for my up. pair, man. I'm waiting You're for mine. Pair. Come I'm on, a wanted, I want the pair, my brother. I need one. <laughs> I need one. We'll hook AJ up. We'll, we'll try to get so, AJ. So look at it. I got, I got hell. I got colors. colors. I, I'll take any I color. Got I, I got, I just like want that. one. I want one pair. Oh, I've been pair. looking for these. So these are the turtle mitts. These exactly. have a pad on the back of the mitt and the front. So I can hold the front and then I turn it around and you can hit the back of the mitt. How That's dope is this? Cool. Hit That's and move all track. day. Promo code Moneyline. That's nice. Hit and move, man. Shout out to him. Hit and move. Repping, sponsoring Money Line, giving us some love. And uh, listen, you get some gloves, you're helping the boys out. Do it. But listen, we got to talk the lock, my brother. Let's do We're it. We're hitting moving it up. So, Mike Finch, hit and move. Give me the lock, my bro. Hitting and moving. Listen, man, I've got two locks, and, and I feel like they both look good to me. Um, I really like Max Holloway over Justin Gaethje. I think Max Holloway over Justin Gaethje makes a lot of sense the way the styles match up. Max Holloway is going to throw more punches than him. He's going to keep landing. He's going to keep moving, and Justin Gaethje hasn't really seen that. As to where Max Holloway has seen this style a little bit more, I mean, the leg kicks will be interesting to deal with, but Justin Gaethje's been getting away from the kicks a little bit, man. His kick look better to me a decade ago his hands look better to me now and that's going to walk right into max holloway's game so let's put max holloway as the lock of the night but i think poetan's a great lock as well alex pahea is going to beat jamal hill jamal hill has a shot though i see jamal hill's overhand right i respect it the problem that poetan's had is that he walks forward with his hands down you throw an overhand right. I've been saying it every freaking show. You guys who watch the show know I've been calling that shit out forever. Israel Adesanya eventually did deliver the package that I've seen coming for a long time. Will Jamal Hill deliver it? It's possible. So that's why my official lock of the night is going to be Max Holloway. But look at Poetan too. Listen, I'm doing more than just lock of the night this week. I'm not giving you two picks, but... If my lock does not win at UFC 300 during the live stream, I will shave my beard, bro. Holy I'm putting shit. it on the fucking line, and I'm coming in with a nice beard. It's 300. I want to look good. My lock is Alexander Rakic. I think he's going to show a lot of people that. There's some holes to Yuri's game, and he's going to be ready to expose them. And he's even money. We got minus 115 now. Takedown option is there. Striking from distance is there. Prohashka is a dog and a savage for sure. But he's dealing with a better technician, and that guy's got some dog in him too. So, yeah, I'm putting the beard on the line just to give you guys some hype for UFC 300. Not a traditional lock. I'm not, it's not even getting shaved. I don't even need to worry. I'm going to be having this beard looking thick on stream. Hey man, I, I respect it. That is that is quite the offer, my friend. Everybody loves a good shave if you lose the bet. So that's a pretty good one, dude. Uh, hey, maybe maybe I'll see you on Monday with a different look, AJ. We'll see because I picked Yuri Prohaska. 
I know you did. I know. I know. I'm excited to see what happens, bro. I'm hype as hell. I'm hype about Hit and Move. Check them out. Give us some love. You buying from them. You're supporting the small business on the come up. And you also are giving some support to your boys. So that's what I like. That's what I like to see. Do it. Do it. Hey, best stuff in the game. I'm so excited to start training with all this stuff. Sure. Um, I've heard the reviews from people. I've, I've already had one of their punching bags already. They make such quality stuff. So I already know it's going to be dope. I'm going to unwrap those bad boys and use them tomorrow. So we'll go over it on Monday. UFC 300, we end up picking up the Hit and Move sponsorship. Phenomenal. If you guys want to support the show, that's one way to do it. Get yourself the best gear in the game. It's Hit and Move. Let's go. My man. It's time for the UFC 300 parlays. All the competition that try to compete, stand back, watch the bomb drop. Parlay time. Open up your wallets and let's bet on some fist fights. Yeah, it's parlay time. I know you drop in some bets, so let's get that money right. Yeah. I got Bobby Green. Listen, I know a lot of you people are on Jim Miller. I respect it. I understand what you're saying, but Jim Miller is a submission specialist, and I don't think he's going to get past the low hands of Bobby Green. And then when he does get in there, I think he's getting an uppercut, a left hook, a right hand. I think he's eating knuckle sandwiches, and I got Bobby Green. And then how am I going to overlook the takedown queen, Wei Li? I think Wei Li's defense. And in the belt. So I got a lock or I got a parlay early on. And the last piece is later on. Give me Wei Lee. Give me Bobby Green for my parlay for UFC 300. I like the parlay for 300, Finch, man. You got minus 110 looking at it range for that parlay, which I think has a pretty damn good shot of coming through for you, bro. I'm picking both. We're on the same side. Now, for me, I feel as though I got to go. With my early belief, Jalen Turner and Davison Figueredo minus 108, but it's 300. I'm going to add a third leg. Marina Rodriguez to run over the prelims at plus 328. Be smart, be intelligent. Listen, after the weigh ins, I'll go in depth with some more parlays, but uh, this is money line. So we're dropping it right here. You know what I'm saying? Money line, we drop parlays too. We do it all up in here, bro. That's how we do it. And and look, I gave you guys two locks. I gave you a nice little parlay. Look at those four. Think about it. All these fights are are interesting and close. Besides, like Bo Nickel, like uh, that's obviously the lock. But the but the you know the money line is way too ridiculous to touch. So you know, I think that we got a lot of action. I'll tell you what, there will be an upset or two on this card. So you just got to figure out where it's at. And uh, that, that's what another way to think about these fights, right? These will be insane. This will be fun. For sure, you're going to win if you're just there to watch exciting fights. So I would say, you know, do your research because all these people on this card, they got a lot of fights to watch. Take your time with it. Make your own decisions. Remember, we're just out here telling you what we think. You got to bet using your own head. I will be placing a couple of these down, though, and I think all four of those I will touch. Let's go. I'm excited as hell. 300 coming at us this Saturday press conference tomorrow, which I'm looking forward to. I'll be reacting to the press conference. So I have a press conference reaction up and obviously late night live tomorrow. We live streaming with the people busy night ahead tomorrow. And I can't wait for it, man. It's going to be a walking W of a day. Finch, man, any final thoughts about 300 before we cap it off? Listen, man, it's fun to dress up with you. UFC 300, me and AJ been at this a long time. We appreciate all the regulars. I'm going to stay right here, and I'm going to break down why I picked those four fights and why I like those. And, uh, you know, I'll talk a little hit and move, too, of course. I want to talk about this card because this is the best card of the year. Now, I hear some people saying best card of all time. I also hear some people shitting on this card. It's right in the middle. Look, it's the best prelims in UFC history. So as a fan you gotta love this thing from bottom to top do not miss davis and figueredo versus cody garbrandt because the fireworks are starting early and i know everybody who watches the show you're a real hardcore fan i'll be back out with some content tonight come pay me a visit and like i said enjoy ufc 300 make sure you're hanging out with aj i'll be hanging out at jeff bezos's house this guy's hanging out with fucking bezos there's the answer <laughs> this guy's a savage listen before i uh close out the show. I'm going to drop Mike Finch's link.
for those wondering where to find them. I also got it in the description, <laughs> but I know the description's easy to miss. So right there, Finchman's channel. Give him a sub. Check him out. I think, what are we calling it? Mike Finch's Confident Picks. Mike Finch's yes. Confident UFC 300 Predictions. Yes. What do you yes. call it? Finch's. Finch's Confident UFC 300 Predictions. Yo, Jer that's my guy, Jeremy. My life, I, I've yeah, freaking known cool. this guy since I was a kid. He's a, a amateur boxer, AJ. So uh, I've, cor I've cornered him in his boxing match. He says, I want Cody, but Figgy wins. Everybody's saying Figgy looked emaciated at weigh-ins. So that's one of the reasons I didn't throw him in there. But yeah, they, uh, they're they going to have a nice little scrap. That's a good one. Okay. Folks, thank you for sticking around. And yes, I'll have a little bit of content up. I appreciate you guys pushing me to make some content. I'm a busy man, but I'm ready for 300. Let's talk fist fights. Let's go. Thank you guys all for watching. Smash the likes on your way out. If you're brand new, subscribe to the channel and also give the Finch man a sub as well. Much Thank love, you. everybody. I'll see you all tomorrow. Content every day. We don't miss it. So keep it locked in right here on the MMA Experts channel. Fight Companion Saturday as well. If you're not already watching those, hey, make sure that you do because it's going to be lit. Thank you guys for watching. History on the line Saturday. We can't wait. Peace out, everybody. Have a great night. We'll see you all in the next one.